welcome to the Bible Map Room. I mean, scattered around this incredible room are all kinds of memories and mementos gathered from my travels to over 65 different nations of the world, including five trips to the Holy Land and Paul's missionary journeys. Well, I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered if God has any favorite place out there in his beautiful created universe? It may surprise you, but I believe that I can prove to you that God does, that he does have a favorite place. But just think for a moment about the size of the created universe. Dr. David Kornreich, the founder of Ask an Astronomer at Cornell University, recently stated that a rough estimate of the number of galaxies in the universe is 10 trillion. 10 trillion! And in each of those 10 trillion galaxies are a massive number of stars and planets. So is it really possible then that, that God could have a favorite place? Well, that good doctor estimated the number of stars and planets that exist out there in the vast universe is, is a number that you've probably never heard of before. I know I never did. It's a hundred octillion. <laughs> Do you have it? A hundred octillion. That's a, that's a one with 29 zeros behind it. Let, let's write that number for you on our flip chart. It's a, a hundred octillion, zero, 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 comma, zero, 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 comma, zero, 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 comma, zero, zero, zero. That's 29 zeros. Oh, so the question then, does God have a favorite place in the universe? Well, that sounds quite, it, it sounds quite impossible, doesn't it? Don't you think? Unless, of course, that God does. <laughs> and if he does, did he reveal it in the Bible? I mean, in Psalm 132, it says this, for the Lord has chosen Zion. He, God, has desired it for his dwelling place. Listen to what he says. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. Where did he select to locate his uh, headquarters, his throne, where Christ will rule? Well, once again, the Bible actually tells you the secret. In the prophet Zechariah chapter 2, it says this, For thus says the Lord of hosts, He who touches you, Jerusalem, touches the apple, the pupil, the center of his eye. Ah, the center of what God focuses on is a place called Jerusalem. And Jesus is going to sit on the throne of David, where? Of all the places in the world? Right in Jerusalem. So of all the locations around the earth, God keeps his eyes focused uh, primarily on the land of the Bible. I mean, he looks everywhere, of course, but the Holy Land of Israel, whoa, that's the centerpiece. After all, you remember what Jesus prophesied, that when he comes back again from the heavens, he's going to go back to a place, a hill that I've been on many times that has a garden on the side. It's called the Mount of Olives. And then he's going to lead from Jerusalem. So let's walk back here for a minute and look at our ancient map, ancient map of the world to get a visual picture of where the Holy Land is located on this, uh, this place we called Earth. It's not in North America or South America. It's not in Australia, not in India, not in Asia, not in Europe, not in Africa. Where, where is it? It is located. This centerpiece of God's place is right here. That's the Holy Land. And where is the pupil of his eye focused on? Right there, right above the Dead Sea where Jerusalem is. Well, obviously, we, we don't have time to learn uh, every single one of the 1,172 different places named in the Bible. We can't. But we have selected the most important. So let's get a handle on where the Bible really takes place in the world one more time. We have a world map here of the places of the Bible. And when you realize this is the world and the Bible focuses right here, and I want you to see actually where the places of the Old Testament is on this map, the places of the Gospels, and finally the places of Acts and the Epistles. 
Here's the place where the Old Testament takes place, right here. That's it. Where do the Gospels take place? Right here. <laughs> and then when you get to Acts and Epistles, it goes this way to the west. And it goes from here all the way over to here. So that's where it takes place. And in this session, we're going to focus on the places of the Old Testament, this part of the map. And you're going to learn the major Old Testament bodies of water, the Old Testament nations and regions, and the Old Testament cities. So here is the map of that same area of the Old Testament blown up. And everything that happened in those 39 books of the Old Testament, it occurred somewhere on this map. And to get started in learning the bodies of water, nations, and cities, how about just a quick survey of the entire story of the Old Testament from the beginning to the end that contains, in my story, every single one of the Old Testament bodies of water, regions and nations, and cities. So you can kind of get the flow of it. Well, where does the Old Testament start? It starts in the Garden of Eden, and it's up here. That's where the Garden of Eden begins, down next to the Tigris River and the Euphrates River that flows into the Persian Gulf. Man sinned, remember? And they kept on sinning until God sent the flood with Noah, who landed up here in the Arab Mountains. Then mankind moved down here further to the area of Babylon. They built the Tower of Babel. And then God judged them with the confusion of languages, and mankind spread out all over the world. That's where the different nations start. And then God focuses on one person and his offspring. God called Abraham. Well, where's Abraham from? He's right from down here in Ur. And he travels up here to a place called Haran. His dad dies here. He travels down with Sarah and his nephew Lot down into the promised land right here. So, so far, do you got this? It starts here, then Noah, and then the Tower of Babel, then uh, Abraham, just like this. And he comes down into Canaan. And he settles in Canaan, the promised land. And he saw the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River and the Dead Sea. And he looks over here into the Mediterranean. I, <laughs> I have fished in the Sea of Galilee. I baptized people in the Jordan River, and I swam or floated in the Dead Sea, and I had a ball in the Mediterranean. These are amazing places. And while Abraham lived here, he also negotiated with God about Sodom and Gomorrah, which was on the side of the Dead Sea. And he saw the Mediterranean. And Abraham and Sarah, they lived right here. They had Ishmael and Isaac, and Isaac had Esau and Jacob, and Jacob had a dozen sons, very famous, including Joseph. Remember him who was sold into slavery and he comes down into Egypt and later there's a massive famine that occurred all throughout this land. Then it brought the Jews who were still living up here down into Egypt where they saw the famous Nile River. After 400 years of bondage here in, in Egypt, Moses led them out across the Red Sea, traveled down to Mount Sinai where God instituted the Old Covenant and where Moses got the Ten Commandments. And then they moved up north and they began to travel toward Canaan. And they stopped at an oasis over here called Kadesh Barnea. And from there, they sent out the 12 spies here. And that's where Jericho happened and all that later on. And unfortunately, Israel rebelled against God and they didn't trust him to help them conquer the giants in the land. And therefore, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And finally, the wandering comes right up here, and they stop in a place called Moab, where Moses died. Joshua then takes over. He crosses the Jordan River, which parts just like the Red Sea did. He defeated Jericho, which is right there, and Ai, and the rest of Canaan. And he divided it up this land on both sides of the Jordan River into the 12 tribes that we read about in the Bible. After the conquest under Joshua, then there was a sad time. 400 years of judges, such as Deborah and Gideon and Samson. They lived right in here and they ruled various parts. Then the final judge was called um, Samuel. And he crowned the first king called Saul. And this period is called the United Kingdom because the judges stopped and they became kings. And Saul reigned from here and David reigned from here and Solomon reigned from here, right in Jerusalem, right here, just a little bit south of Jericho. After Solomon died, his son, Rehoboam, took over and he made some foolish choices and the nation split in half. Think about what I'm saying to you. Ten tribes moved and had their own king, 
This was called the divided kingdom. It used to be called the united kingdom. Now it's the divided kingdom with the northern part called as Israel, and they established their own capital. They left Jerusalem and they made Samaria their capital. And the southern part was called Judah with two tribes, where Jerusalem as its capital. Unfortunately, both the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah kept growing in their rebellion and their idol worship until God sent various nations to judge them, including Syria up here, who kept coming down with its capital in Damascus. And finally, Israel, the ten tribes up here, was defeated by a country way up here, a famous ruthless country called Assyria, with the capital of Nineveh, where both Jonah and Nahum preached. And they came down, they conquered them, they talked to Jews, and they scattered them around the world up here into different nations. Judah's watching all this. They have some uh, revivals, but not for long. And later, Judah was destroyed by a different country. Here's Assyria with Nineveh. South of it is Babylonia with its capital known as Babylon. And they came around three times, conquered them, and then brought the people. They didn't scatter them. They brought them back around here to Babylon. And to Babylonia, people like uh, Ezekiel and Daniel lived here in Babylon for a 70-year period we call the exile. Well, at the end of that 70 years, Babylon eventually was conquered by a nation that was just a little south east of them called Persia. And the king of Persia said to the Jews who were living here in the exile, why don't you go home? Why don't you come back around and rebuild your temple and your walls and and become a people again. And, uh, and they did. And they came around this way under three people. Zerubbabel came around. Ezra brought some people and came around. And finally, Nehemiah came around. Well, believe it or not, Nehemiah ends the Old Testament. And 400 years later, the New Testament opens with the birth of Jesus Christ. That's the story of the entire Old Testament. And I'm going to go over that numerous times in all these sessions because I want you to feel comfortable that you know what's going on. Here, 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 down to here, down to here, up to here, wander in the wilderness, into here, lots of years, conquered, scattered, conquered, brought back, and then three times here, and that's the end. Now let's memorize the Old Testament bodies of water. You already learned them. <laughs> Here's the top river, Tigris, T for top, T for Tigris. Here's the bottom river, Euphrates. Here is the Persian Gulf right here. Tigris, Euphrates, Persian Gulf. Come down, Sea of Galilee, Jordan River, Dead Sea, Mediterranean, Nile River, Red Sea, and guess what? <laughs> That's all you have to learn for the bodies of water. Let's take a look at that. The answers are all written in. The Tigris River, the Euphrates River, Persian Gulf. Tigris, Euphrates, Persian Gulf. Sea of Galilee, Jordan River, Dead Sea, Mediterranean, Nile River, and Red Sea. Now it's time to move to the nations and the regions of the Old Testament. We have nine to learn, and I would say you probably already know seven of them. Remember, the Bible starts here, and it goes up here, comes down here, comes here, and then goes down here. And I want to start the regions and nations as we came into Canaan. This is Canaan, the Promised Land. They go down into Egypt. That's the second one I want you to know, Canaan and Egypt. They come down to Mount Sinai. They wander in the wilderness. They end up at Moab, Moab. Then they come in, and uh, the conquest happens, and the judges happens. And you remember then the nation splits in half, the divided kingdom. And this becomes known as Israel. And this is known as, that's right, Judah. You getting it? They come around. This is Canaan. This is Egypt. This is obviously the wilderness. This is Moab. They're in here for a number of years. Splits Israel in the north. It used to be called all of Israel. Now it's divided. Israel in the north and Judah in the south. There are four countries that um, attack them. One is, is Syria up in here. Then Assyria here, where the northern tribes are scattered, followed by the Babylonians who come around and come three times and bring people back into exile for 70 years. And then later on, 70 years later, Persia comes on the scene and destroys Babylon and says to the people, go home under Zerubbabel, Ezra, Nehemiah. So it's Canaan, 
Egypt, Moab, Israel, Judah. This is Syria. This is Assyria that Jonah preached to and Nahum preached to. This is Babylonia where Ezekiel and Daniel lived. And this is Persia and three important people, Ezra. And while Ezra's over here, Esther's taking place over here. Remember Esther? You'll learn about more about that later. Then the Nehemiah, and that's it. So let's see if we can't summarize it. And the order we're teaching you, Canaan, Egypt, wilderness, Moab comes in eventually after the conquest and the judges, United Kingdom and divided kingdom. Northern part is Israel, southern part is Judah. And there's four nations that attack them. Syria, Assyria, Babylonia. Persia doesn't really attack them. Persia lets them go home. Do you have it? Now we're just going to go back one more time. We've already reviewed some of these cities a number of times, but we want you to learn the key cities of the Old Testament. There aren't very many. And I'm going to start this time with the cities actually on the map. You remember it starts up here with the Garden of Eden, then Ararat, and the Tower of Babel, and then eventually comes down to Ur. Who's born there? That's right, Abraham and Sarah. And they go up around and they come down here and remember the big negotiations with Sodom and Gomorrah. Then they have the kids, Ishmael, Isaac, Esau, Jacob, Joseph comes down into Egypt. There's no cities here that we need to learn. But we, I put a non-city called Mount Sinai in here because I want you to know where that is on this peninsula here. There's the Red Sea. Here's Mount Sinai. Then they travel up north to Kadesh Barnea where the spies are sent out. They come back later. They disobey God. They wander in the wilderness till that generation dies. Then they end up, they're traveling right here at the top of the Dead Sea on this side of the Jordan River in Moab. In Moab, before Moses dies, he appoints Joshua to be the leader. And he comes across and destroys through an amazing story of Jericho where the walls come down, except for one part where Rahab was with the red cloth outside the window. You remember that story? Then you have this period of the judges. And then you eventually have this United Kingdom where everybody centers on Jerusalem. That's where Saul, David, and Solomon dwell and lead from. Then the nation splits and the south becomes Judah and the north becomes Israel. That's right. And the capital of the south is Jerusalem. And I want you not to forget this, this uh, city here. That's the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. And there's all kinds of wars between these guys. Samaria. And Damascus, who's the capital of Syria, comes down and conquers numerous times. Then Nineveh, who's the capital of Assyria, where Jonah preached, comes around and scatters the northern tribes this way. Later on, the Babylonians come around in the city of Babylon. Three times they, they destroy. They bring around 50,000 people back this way. And here is where um, Ezekiel and Daniel live. And 70 years later is when the Persians come on. But there's not really an important city for us to learn. So do you, do you got this? Think about it for a minute. Starts here, up to here, down to here. Ur, first big city. Down here, Sodom and Gomorrah. Egypt, Mount Sinai, Kadesh Barnea, wandered, come in and conquered Jericho. Capital for the United Kingdom is Jerusalem. Then the capital, after it divides, of the northern is called Samaria. And three key cities that are very important in the Old Testament is Damascus, the capital of Syria, Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, and Babylon, the capital of Babylonia. Let's see if you got this. Do you have it? The cities of the Old Testament. By, by the way, how about a review? Uh, the Tigris, the Euphrates, the Persian Gulf, the Sea of Galilee, Jordan River, Dead Sea, Mediterranean, the Nile, the Red Sea. So you got it. The nations? Did you get the nations? Think about this now. Canaan, Egypt, Moab, Israel, Judah, Syria, Assyria, Babylonia. See, you're getting it. Persia. And now we're back on these cities, and I want you to get them. Don't lose track of them at all. One more time. Abraham comes from Ur all the way around. See Sodom and Gomorrah. It's destroyed down to Egypt, down to Mount Sinai, up to Kadesh, up to Moab, conquers Jericho. Eventually, the nation splits. The capital of the south is Jerusalem. Capital of the north is Samaria. 
Three big cities, Damascus, Nineveh, Babylon. You got it? I think you do. Now it's time to connect the story of the Old Testament to the places of the Old Testament through a series of geographical movements on a map. But before I do, let's look at the big story one more time. Creation, the fall of man, the flood, the Tower of Babel, and then God calls Abraham, comes around. This is a movement, isn't it, on the land of the Old Testament? Then into Israel, and then eventually, you remember, Joseph gets sold down to Egypt, and then Moses rises and leads the people through the Red Sea down to Mount Sinai. They send out the spies. They wander in the wilderness. Then Joshua comes over, conquers them. Then the judges, then the United Kingdom, then the divided kingdom, then Assyria conquers Israel and scatters them, and the Babylonians conquer Judah and bring them back over here. Then the Persians say to the Jews, go home, and they do. And that's the story of the Old Testament. You got it? Now, the next part is we're going to take this story and break it into three parts. And my goodness, is the Old Testament going to fit like never before? Our first map is the geographical movements of Genesis through Deuteronomy. In summary, there are four of them. It goes from here to here, here to here. That's two, three, four. Let's put it together for you. We've even named these for you. And what's going to happen is the story is going to fit right on here and the places are going to fit here. It's going to help you memorize everything. The first one is called the spiral because it starts at the top with creation, which is wonderful, but then the fall of man and then the flood and then the Tower of Babel and then it's, it just goes downhill. It's called the spiral. Then God calls one person named Abraham out of a city called Ur, and he travels around this fertile crescent between the two rivers. And therefore, we call this movement simply the crescent. Then Abraham has Ishmael and Isaac, and they have other children. And eventually, a man named Joseph is pushed down, and he goes down into Egypt. He's, it's called the slide and then the famine occurs and all of Israel goes down into the nation of um, Egypt. And eventually they, they're put under slavery. And 400 years later, God says, it's time for you to come out. And God raises Moses, who leads the people through the Red Sea, down to Mount Sinai, where they got the law and the covenant, up to Kadesh Oasis, where they sent out the 12 spies. And then they wander in the wilderness for 40 years to Moab, where Moses dies. Well, let's move to the next map. We've blown up part of the land of the Old Testament to the land of Canaan, and we're going to deal with the geographical movements of Joshua through Second Chronicles. It, it, it's really simple. There's only four movements. Number one, when Joshua came in, went around Jericho and conquered it. Second, when this whole section was ruled by judges that went through a cycle of seven uh, times of disobeying God and being judged. The third is the United Kingdom, right here, where one king ruled the entire land. And the fourth is the divided kingdom, and it's split because of the poor leadership of Rehoboam. Let's see if we can't draw it for you. First thing is called the loop. It's the loop because they come across the Jordan River, go around Jericho over and over again until it's destroyed. Then he conquers all of the land. That's the loop. The second thing that happens is a period of the judges, which is a cycle that goes around and around seven times of disobedience and warning and judgment and so forth. And the last judge, Samuel, crowns the first king who ruled this entire area called the United Kingdom because one king ruled all 12 tribes. And Solomon, who was the last of the United Kingdom, his son comes in named Rehoboam and does the fourth one. He divides the nation out of his harshness. We call this the slash. And now this is Israel and this is Judah and that's it. Do you have it? The loop, the cycles, the box, and the slash. The conquest, the judges, the United Kingdom, and the divided kingdom. In a minute, we're going to go to the end of the Old Testament. But are you getting these signs? Because they're so helpful. Well, for our final one, we want to go to the map of, that covers the geographical movements of Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. And there's only two. The first one is like a boomerang. You ever seen a picture of it? Maybe you've had a boomerang where you throw it and it comes back. 
Well, here's the boomerang of the Old Testament. Assyria comes around, conquers Israel, and sends them back and scatters them. That's the first part of the boomerang. And the second part of the boomerang is when the Babylonians come around, conquer them, and bring them back to live here called the exile. That's the boomerang. Assyria, Israel, scatter. Babylonia, Judah, the exile for 70 years. At the end of 70 years, you remember, Persia comes on, conquers Babylon, says to the Jews to go back. And there are three returns. <laughs> Where Ezra and Nehemiah and Zerubbabel came around and they rebuild the city. They rebuild the walls. They rebuild the temple. And that's it. Do you have it? The boomerang and the wave of the returns. Well, now what I want to do for you is see if you can put it all together for yourself on the next map. Um, I'm not going to really, yeah, maybe, no, I'm not going to use my pen. Let's just see if you can't put it together for yourself. Here comes the spiral and the crescent and the slide and the twister and the loop and the cycles and the box for the United Kingdom and the slash for the divided kingdom and then the, right, the boomerang and the wave. And that's the story of the Old Testament. Well, don't worry, because at the end of this series, you're going to be able to draw all those 10 lines in your sleep. But what I want you to understand is um, you need to review this a little bit. And maybe see if you can't draw those 10 lines yourself. Because in the next session, session number three, the people of the Old Testament, we're going to go to the gathering room and you're going to have an amazing time. And later on, we're going to put the key people where they belong on those lines. And then the last session, we're going to put the periods on those lines until you have the entire Old Testament yourself. Well, we want you to really find yourself feeling more and more at home in the Old Testament. So get ready for the people of the Old Testament.